Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of EverQuest Old School. And tonight we are over in Unrest with my cleric, and we are level 17. Actually getting a lot of experience in this one. I did a video just a few minutes ago, and at the very, at the very beginning of that video we were at two bubbles. And now we were at four. So yeah, in basically 45 minutes we earned uh, two bubbles of experience. That is insane, even at this level. That's a lot of freaking experience. So yeah, this room is really good. And tonight, there's not a whole lot of people on, so we do have a really good group to boot. And so the tank is able to pull a lot more creatures, because one, he's not competing with other groups who are trying to pull the same creatures. And two, we can actually take it. Whereas most groups fighting here probably wouldn't go off and pull just as many gnolls as we're, we're getting. We're pretty much pulling everything that he has within his distance uh, before he can't get back before he dies or something you know I mean he he's pulling everything he can possibly pull before stuff within his area respawns uh, that's pretty much the only distance is how fast you can run and how fast the creatures are repopping uh, before you can get out to that distance unless you kinda go off in just one direction rather than a you know like a 360 degree angle uh, around your camp which you can't always do if you're in a dungeon you know, you kind of have to go down hallways, and they can lead you off in, in weird uh, spots. So you have to take in that take that into account about how far you can get away uh, before you have to come back with those spawns. But basically, that's what he's doing, which is crazy for unrest because it's just it's very compact. So he doesn't have to run very far to find creatures in the first place. And the fact that he's literally, you know, expanding that distance just goes to show just how many creatures uh, not only are we killing, but the group above us is killing. But they've kind of found this nice little balance because we've been here for so long to share it. And that, that's another good thing about this game that so many of the new games coming out, because they're so quick, don't ever really get to to show. Because if you're in a group and you're down here and you guys are pooling and you're in another group uh, pretty close by and you guys are pooling in, in another MMO, uh, which is going to be pretty rare as it is because most of the time... Uh, people don't really pull to groups uh, that much in, in most uh, MMOs. Usually the group will move with them. But if you're in one of those games where they do pull back and you guys are close by, usually that won't be for long. Usually you'll be in those groups and within, like I said, you know, because you're always on the move, within, you know, a few minutes uh, or maybe 20 or 30 minutes, you know, you guys have moved on to the next part. Maybe you guys were clearing off an area or waiting for other people to show up and that's why, that's why you were so close together. But in this one, that's a common occurrence, being here uh, in a spot for a very, very long time, uh, killing the same creatures, and still feeling like you're progressing through the game, so you're still having fun, you're still talking to other players, and then having that that interaction with another group who's doing the exact same thing, and again, is also going to be there for a long time. And so when problems occur, you have to work them out, literally have to, because you're going to be stuck with those people for a very very long time probably and uh, they're gonna be stuck with you so if you two start feuding you know a lot of people will do that at first because they don't really realize what that means because they're just starting the game and you realize very very quickly that that means you're gonna be fighting for 45 minutes or longer sometimes uh, especially at higher levels when you get into groups a lot of people will stay you know they they play on their day off and they sit there and they're like oh, okay now I got like six or seven hours to play the game and they stay there in one room for the whole time trying to get that really really good piece of armor or a weapon uh, or, or money whatever it is that they're after in that or maybe just experience maybe they're trying to get out of one of those heck levels uh, that just takes so much longer to get by uh, but whatever the case is you know they're gonna be there for long periods of time and so yeah that means you're fighting the entire time that, that makes the gameplay horrible, but for both sides, nobody enjoys that really, other than the, the one in the million person out there who enjoys that conflict, but yeah, most people aren't going to enjoy that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be kind of exciting at first, I guess, for some people, because they're like, oh yeah, yeah, we're going to win this fight, and then they just realize that it doesn't stop, and you do little things to them, like now, because you guys aren't getting along, and you're right next to each other, that means when you have situations like this that are just amazing, because they have so many things to pull and things are going well for both groups and literally if we get into trouble because we've talked to them and we've, we've you know developed some kind of little little relationship with them especially our tank has because you know the two tanks are the ones who really kind of have to work it out 
whether it's like an unspoken... Okay, I see you're over there. Because you're both running around in the hallways. And you bump into each other going the same way. You know, back and forth across each other's paths. And you see that enough times, you're kind of like, hey. You know, you're just stopping your tracks. And that's kind of like the universal language to, hey, stop coming this route, right? I'll, I'll stop going your route, you'll stop going my route. This will be like the neutral area right here. No spawns, obviously. It's going all the way up. But it'd be like, I don't go to, in your territory, you don't come into mine. And we'll both get an equal amount of pulls. Because you can figure it out in your head. Because you've been pulling his side, he's been pulling your side. He knows how many spawns are over there. You know how many spawns are on his side. You know how many spawns your group can handle and how many spawns his group can handle. And uh, you, you split it off evenly. You don't try to be greedy about it. You know, one side may have one extra pull or an extra room that has, you know, a lot more pulls in it. And it will become a sticky situation if there's a named room in the, in the middle that you can both pull. Then you literally will have to send messages and, and try to figure that out. Maybe he gets one spawn and you get the next or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely easier to do that kind of stuff if your two groups are either just uh, neutral or getting along. Getting along is so much nicer because, like I said, if, if you get into trouble and you guys uh, have helped them out in the past... Because a lot of the time when I was a tank... Uh, or even as a healer and we're getting along with another group, uh, they would have my name or I would have their healer name uh, basically on speed dial. I would know what it is and be ready to use it uh, if my group was about to die. If we got a, a pool that we weren't expecting, I could send them a message and be like, hey man, can you come over here real quick and uh, toss a few heals and we're about to die or something like that. And if they could do it, you know, if they were in a big fight of their own, I didn't expect them to do that. Uh, but they would come over and they would heal if they weren't doing something. And usually, you know, when the zone is is going that route they or that well they can they can come over and, and toss a few heals so yeah they they would do that and then in return most of the time it would happen where I would do it first uh, just because I would see that they were in trouble you know if you can hear it a lot of the time when you're in a a zone that this cl is close by to another group you can hear when they get into a fight and they can hear when you get in a fight and if you're just sitting here waiting for the next fight you 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 actually sit there and listen to them and you can tell what's going on. You can hear the magic being cast uh, for certain spells. You can hear the creature get hit with that magic. You can hear the creature uh, bones crushing if it's getting hit hard. You can also kind of tell. It sounds like the exact same thing, but you, for some reason, it's. I remember, you can kind of tell when it's happening to the group more than when it's happening to the creatures. Uh, so if, if it sounded like it was going bad up there, or when you pull these creatures, you know they all make their own unique sound. So if it sounded like they pulled like 15 creatures at one time, then you know, okay, maybe they're in trouble. And so uh, the tank and the healer would usually be the ones who like ran like three feet down the hallway to the next group because you'd, you'd usually be that close or maybe up the stairs and they're right above you kind of like in this situation. Uh, but they are still incredibly close to where I'm at. I mean, literally, I run up these stairs to the left, take another left down this wall, and they were literally right here above us. So yeah, I mean, that's like 20 feet, if that, going down that distance. And so we're able to pull all our stuff down here. They're able to pull all that stuff up there, but we're that close to each other. And so if they needed to, they could run down here and help us out, and we could run up there and help them. Uh, you know, but again, like I said, you know, it, it just comes down to getting along. So <laughs> because that situation happens quite often, people will go out of their way to resolve their issues so if you're one of those people who get real stubborn and don't like to to give uh, yeah you're gonna cause some issues for yourself and probably for a lot of other people because that, that's really a horrible horrible situation to, to have that anxiety of those two groups not getting along because I've been in somewhere that's the situation I think I'm completely and totally right and you know let me let me attack some of this stuff real quick because I haven't actually hit or done anything in a while here and I'm just basically sitting here getting free experience and I feel horrible doing that uh, no he didn't resist but it didn't really do that much damage to him oh cause it's a carrying ghoul huh oh wow healer's getting beat on let me heal her up real quick we got some werebats coming in here let's see See, BFF Goofball, He's, he comes over here every so often, and he pulls some really high creatures, and then he tanks them for us. And while we're, we're beating on him, so he's taking all the hits, basically. Uh, but we get the experience, and 
I don't know why he shows up every so often. He's not here the whole time. But yeah, it's definitely pretty nice when he does that. It's, it's pretty nice when anybody takes the time out of whatever they're doing to help out a whole bunch of lower levels just because. Like, nobody knows him, personally. They're not friends with him. He just came over here to do that. And <laughs> that's incredibly nice. I, I know in the old days, I would get bored, you know, looking for a group. And I would put my name on all the list in a certain zone and be like, hey, you know, give me a call when, when a spot opens up, I'll gate back or something like that. And in the meantime, I would go sit in a zone nearby or whichever one I could get to and, uh, you know, res people and do stuff like that because I was bored. You know, I, was, I wasn't wasting my time because I thought, you know, one, I'm helping people out and that's, that's better than really just sitting at the zone entrance waiting for a group. So I'll go do that. So he may be do, doing something just to, just to like. I mean, he may be waiting for a raid to start. He, lo he logged on an hour early, and he's coming over here and just helping somebody out. Uh, because he doesn't want to get into a group knowing that he literally would have to leave in like an hour to go to the raid. So people will do that kind of thing. I mean, he's not wasting his time. He's probably waiting for something else to start. But that's a good kind of use of your time, too, to, uh, to give back to the community. Because every time you do something like that, it blows people's minds who are just uh, starting for the first time and seeing that there's people who actually come over here and, and spend their time to help other you know complete strangers out it just blows people mi people's minds and it's because it's such a nice thing to do uh, and most people unfortunately probably never even consider doing something like that because they've never seen it done yeah, not that they're not good people it's just that they've never seen something like that even done in an MMO because I know I hadn't the first time I saw it it was well obviously it's the first time but you know back in the day it just wasn't something that was that was really practiced uh, in any other game because you couldn't you know we were playing muds and then you were playing single player single player was was just the way it was for like 99 percent of the games it was, it was like the rare ones that started using the multiplayer aspect and it was such a new thing that when this game came out this, it just blew them all away the fact that you could you had text boxes that you could talk to people you could see their actions on the screen uh, interact with them in that route you could actually train creatures onto them and then sit there and watch them die because of it and then you know get tells from that person that were only to you you know you know, cussing you out and doing all this stuff. That was completely new. And so, uh, to actually spend your time helping somebody else out was like a complete and total new concept. And uh, nowadays, it's probably not that big of a deal, but I still think it makes the server, you know, just that much more enjoyable. Because you got good people. Uh, you know, you may have the worst day online. Uh, you know, just you log on and everything goes wrong. I mean, every, so for the, I've logged on in the past where literally the moment I log on, I, I camp myself in such a horrible spot that uh, I log into a train and I die. <laughs> and that's a horrible way to start the game. And then, uh, you know, things can go progressively uh, worse from there. You can have a hard time getting back to your corpse, or the worst part of any course retrieval is getting back to your corpse just to die again <laughs> and have to do the whole thing all over again, but this time with double the experience loss. Uh, because you died twice so yeah it's you know you can have a really horrible day and that entire day literally can be turned around with just a, a random act of kindness you know if you die like five times in a row trying to get back to your corpse and you're not a cleric uh, because you're having just the worst uh, corpse retrieval of your, your uh, game experience that you've ever had and a cleric runs by and sees five corpses on the ground and does a who all uh, to see if they're they're still in the game sees that they're on and tosses a res on all five corpses one by one after he spawns gives them all that experience back uh, and then just runs off you know doesn't doesn't have to uh, doesn't have to uh, ask for money just you know here's some random corpse uh, reses uh, to to help you out and poof, you're, you're gone you're off with your your day whatever you were doing running to a group running to a zone to check to see if there's groups available going back to town uh, you know just randomly throw out a, a, those reses and you've turned his day from being one of the cruddiest days to being, eh, not, not too great, but not too horrible either. <laughs> because, you know, he did die and he did lose a little bit of experience. Uh, but by that point, he feels pretty good because he just got most of it back. And he doesn't have to run to, uh, to his corpse again because that, that can really take it out of you some, day, some days when it's just so many. 
course retrieval. So many, you know, zones to get back to your body, only to die and do it all over again. <laughs> so yeah, plus the time it takes to do that. So yeah, it's it's definitely uh, it's nice when people toss those things out because I have played as a Shadow Knight and I have played as a healer, a cleric. So I do know from both sides. Uh, from the tank who can't he or can't uh, res himself, who dies in some of the weirdest spots, and have literally gotten reses from people just running by in that spot. They just ran by, saw my corpse, uh, used their their little clicky on their on their epic, or you know, tossed the spell out itself uh, because they knew that their power would go out before they got to wherever they were going, <laughs> and, and res me. But they weren't even there when I got when I got there. You know, I I clicked yes, and by the time I load in, they're gone. You know, they, did, they didn't wait, they were, they were doing whatever they were doing, and I wasn't going to ask them to wait, you know, but I would definitely have given them money if they had, but that's the whole point. They weren't doing it for the money, they were just doing it because, because somebody had done that for them, because they realized what a pain in the butt that is, you know, and so that uh, definitely makes the game, uh, for, that, for me, that makes the game come alive in the fact that it reminds me that I'm actually playing with other people. It's, it's very easy to, uh, to start to think the game is not populated by people when you're soloing all the time because you you can actually go to zones that for the most part you will be you will be the only one there you will not see anybody else the whole time uh, you fight in that zone if you go there at the right time of the day and you go off the beaten path uh, completely there are zones that are very very common that people love to visit and then there are zones that people have to go through to get to those zones and then there are zones around those two zones that people will sometimes go off to uh, basically off the beaten path but around those zones that are around the beaten path there are probably two or even three more layer of zones that will get you further and further and further away from pretty much everybody who plays the game and so you can go off really into the wilderness and and find a zone that's just really really hard to get to or maybe not hard to get to just really far away so it takes a long time to get to it and then there won't be anything good there or except exceptional there may be good items but not anything that would really make somebody travel that long distance to get there if there had been like a wizard or a druid teleport closer by then people might go to that zone a little bit more often but because they have to walk to that zone uh, there's there's far and few in between uh, when people visit and so you can go to zones like that and I've seen people who quite literally go to those zones because they know they will be alone because they they don't like grouping with other players or even seeing other players because if you have some bad experiences with people that could drive you away from people altogether if you uh, you know take things incredibly personally or uh, or just completely and totally afraid of dealing with other players or maybe you just had you know train after train after train or dealing with uh, immature people or whatever the case is that makes you that way uh, you can play this game and still be perfectly fine I mean there's a lot of zones that you could do that way, that route I wouldn't suggest it I guess I would say maybe start that route and because you're part of a, a global community it's going to kind of force you to interact with people even if you don't want to, but if you realize that's a good thing for you, you can kind of, kind of get into the game for that. Maybe the game will, will force you into uh, to opening up a little bit because it did for me when I first started. Back when I was a teenager, I was one of those, those shy type of people, and it's opened me up. Obviously, I'm doing videos uh, on the internet for pretty much anybody to listen to. Uh, you know, it gets, it gets a, a few, a decent amount of views and. Uh, one day maybe millions who knows but see that I'm opening myself up to that uh, if it happens so yeah it's you know starting from being shy to going to this point that's that's pretty big transformation and this game kinda helped me with that I think this the game what it, the game really gave me most of all is my typing skill <laughs> like I, when I first started this game I quite literally uh, had to use my my index finger one on each hand and I typed like that and I had to look for each one of the keys and, and be like where's the K key Where, where's that key you know I had to go scan through every single one of them and it took me forever to type now some of you guys who are listening are probably like what how could that be you know you grew up with computers I wasn't introduced to my first computer until I was like eight and that's only because 
my brother was the one who brought it over on one of his visits, uh, you know, and he showed it to me for the very first time. It wasn't until like another four years that the schools got them. And I remember that was a huge thing. They would have one computer lab in the whole school that everybody had to take turns using. And so the classes would actually have schedules. You know, fifth grader classes can use them today. Fourth grader classes can use them tomorrow. And they, they all had to share the, uh, the computers. And so it was a very rare thing to get to go in there. And then when you got to go in there... Uh, you get to pretty much play around. It's like a, a free day almost because the whole point is to get familiar with computers and the teachers didn't know anything about them. I mean, the whole brand new thing and teachers don't get paid jack back then as they do now. I mean, they, it's, it's, uh, it's hard. They should get paid ten times as much as they, they are, I believe. But, you know, they're, they're not. And so they weren't buying the state-of-the-art technology that had just come out and was, you know, really, really expensive. And so they and they weren't getting paid uh, or getting free classes from the school to do it uh, to learn the the subject. They had probably would have to go off and spend their own money and and go to school and take classes to learn how to use that, and then to learn how to be able to teach that subject to other people, uh, especially you know you know third fourth graders and beyond or whatever. But so they weren't getting all that. So even though we had the computers, nobody knew really how to use them. So it was just a free day. You got to go in there and play around and. <laughs> those computers were very very basic so yeah I mean it's I didn't really grow up using the keyboard I mean it wasn't until uh, much later in my life that that became even a, a thing to consider and so those of you who grew up uh, you know using cell phones and all that other stuff and you know where all the keys are and you can't even possibly fathom you know uh, <laughs> being able to do that or not being able to do that yeah it was just a different time guys I mean it it's actually it wasn't really that long ago I mean it was but it wasn't Com compared to you know like the industrial revolution <laughs> horse and carriage and cars that long ago yeah it wasn't time goes by pretty quickly and technology is like doubling and quadrupling and just just going crazy and so <laughs> I was like I was telling my my brother the other day because he has uh, two kids uh, I think one's like uh, is the girl or <laughs> the girl my niece is, uh, I, I believe, 11, because she just had her birthday uh, not too not too long ago. Um, and I was remember telling him, I was like, you know, she's going to grow up not knowing what those, uh, those big fat TVs look like. Like, all she's ever seen have been flat screen TVs. And it's amazing because it wasn't really that long ago, you know, less than like 10 years ago, that those kind of TVs were pretty much in everybody's house and technology is just going nuts and so it's going to be kind of funny to see uh, the new generation and uh, you know what kind of technology they remember within you know 20 years I mean will they look back on their time as a as a teenager uh, and then as they're when they were kids and be like you know <laughs> they remember using giant cell phones and now it's like implanted into their ear or something like that or into their head uh, <laughs> when they're 17, will they be saying, oh, I remember when, like a, like we used to say when you were like 80 and you're always like, oh, I remember when, and now they're 17 and they're saying that because technology is going by so quickly? I think it might because that's, that's crazy how much cell phones have changed and how fast uh, they're, you know, evolving right before our eyes. So, yeah, I think, uh, I think I went off the subject a little bit, but definitely one that I think is kind of interesting. So if you guys have any opinions on that or just want to add your two cents, uh, definitely uh, leave those comments down below. Always love hearing back from you guys. Uh, this is really the main reason I do these videos is to connect with you because, you know, th this is a game that should be shared. And a lot of other games uh, are pretty cool to watch. I grew up with uh, a lot of brothers. So because we weren't super, super rich, we weren't able to buy, you know, eight TVs and eight Super Nintendos and eight of the same game to give every single one of our our uh, brothers and sisters the chance to play the game at the exact same time. And so we had one system and one game and most of the time just uh, a couple of remotes. And so we had to take turns playing. And so when we got home from school and, you know, we're all there, we all want to play. Well, you know, oldest brother gets to go first, obviously, because they're bigger and they can hit harder. <laughs> And, uh, you know, then you get to take turns. And so I would 
for a long period of time just sit there and watch them play because if you got you know five brothers to watch before it's your turn or you know they two of them go and you go and the two more go uh, you know you're gonna be watching quite a bit of footage before it's your turn to play again and for some reason I find that to this day still very enjoyable and I think a lot of you guys do as well because for me I can experience the game that way I can get a lot of enjoyment watching somebody else play because for me it's it's not a necessity to actually have the power in my hands to play that game every single time there are situations where I definitely oh I want to play that game but there's other ones where I'm like oh, I, I could be a passenger on this one I can sit there and watch like almost like a movie and if somebody's narrating the experience for me and making it kind of fun and enjoyable maybe throwing in a few jokes because I love watching things with comedy and that's that def I always kind of wanted to see a comedian do a let's play you know I mean I can just imagine uh, you know, I hate to say Robin Williams because I know he passed away and it was, it was very unfortunate uh, that, that, that all that happened. But could you imagine him or Jim Carrey doing a, a Let's Play of a video game and just sitting there cracking jokes and doing voices uh, over the characters and, and just, I mean, having a blast with it? That would be amazing to listen to listen to that kind of thing. But I haven't really found any comedians that do this kind of kind of stuff. I kind of hope that might be a route they go one day when they realize just uh, how awesome that would be for them, uh, for anybody listening. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see if if anybody ever does that. Or if you guys know of a, a really good comedian that does Let's Plays, let me know. And I'm not talking about, like, slapstick uh, comedian. I'm talking about actual, like... <laughs> and I didn't want to say talent, because I don't really like slapstick. But, uh, you know, actual jokes that don't require... Uh, you can just like goofy voices to make them work like if, if the voice enhances the joke so much the better I, I enjoy that but if it's if it revolves around you know like the voice or some kind of weird kind of slapstick humor it just doesn't uh, ring completely true for me as far as humor goes but if you know somebody else oh my god your animated hand uh, can we take that I don't think we can take that <laughs> well I guess we're gonna try let me, uh, in fact, what song? Let me do F10 so you guys can get a nice little picture of it before I gotta go back and heal. There we go. Let me heal him up just to be safe. And then we'll go back to F10 for a few seconds. The only reason I don't like using the, the screen without the buttons on it is uh, because I can't see if anybody's getting hurt, so. If the hand isn't attacking him, I think I think we can go ahead and just leave it like this. But if the hand switches targets, uh, we'll definitely... No, I guess they're going to kill this hand pretty quickly, because otherwise our tank just wouldn't uh, walk out the room. Yeah, that was pretty easy. I thought that was going to be a lot harder. <laughs> okay, so that's that's pretty nice. I think that's pretty cool. That's our first reanimated hand, guys. That's... Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of different types of creatures in this game. Let's go up there and check to see what's on its corpse. Just because I'm curious. Oh, check that out. Ivory bracelet. End of age. What is that? Go ahead and link all of it. Let's see. Uh, three agility. 20 mana. We also got a topaz and a page. Huh. What? If, if nobody loots the, uh... The bracelet, I'll take that. Oh, okay, somebody else might need it. I'll let them go with that. Because I already have one that's just as good. Uh, I could replace my other one with it. This one right here. No, that's the exact same thing. Yes, yeah, see, I already have one. And this is the one I got from uh, ZK just a little while ago. Uh, see, so, yeah, it's not as good. I'd rather have uh, the polished bone bracelet, to be honest, because I get that little bit extra AC. Uh, even though... Yeah, I mean, it's... Plus, I get more wisdom. So, yeah, I mean... Not as good, I guess, uh, for me. I'll let one of them have it. <laughs> How do I roll again? It's forward slash random. 
space one space whatever the in number you want it to be so if you're randoming one through one thousand then it's gonna be random space one space one thousand uh, you can go all the way up to like a million if you guys want to do that uh, it's usually a pretty easy to do one through one hundred it's very obvious right off the bat uh, if you do one through one million that's a lot of numbers to look through before you kinda figure it out and if two people get really really close within like one digit of each other which happens even at one through one million <laughs> You're going to have to sit there and go through the whole thing to figure that out. That's, you know, why make it that difficult on you? Why not just do 1 through 100? And there it is right there. They're showing you how to do that. Oh, yeah. I did not even notice I was close to level 18. Wow, so that's pretty cool. I think we're going to, yeah, we should end the video here on a high note because we are now level 18. And I'll go ahead and call it getting to level 18 <laughs> to make you guys really wait through that entire episode. Uh, so you get to what the actual episode is named. Um, yeah, I think that would be kind of cool. <laughs> you guys are going to leave me a lot of hate mail below. Okay, so again, if you do enjoy these videos, which you probably are hating me right now, uh, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe because that definitely does help my channel grow, and I do greatly appreciate that, guys. Um, we're getting close to 100. Uh, we're at 80 right now, and so when we get to 100, we're going to go ahead and do some kind of a giveaway like always. So, uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next episode.